Hello and welcome to Hoopscene.com's March to Making show. We're breaking down the Elite Eight here. We're talking about Class 5A boys. I'm joined by Justin Young, Robert Alfonso, Eric Ellerton. I'm Mike Eddy, and these guys are our experts. So we're going we're gonna to look back, and then we're going to look forward. So to kind of look back, what surprised you so far, Justin? Well, in the 5A division of the Georgia High School State Association State Playoffs is that nothing surprised me. Everything's still in its right place. We still have the teams that we thought would be at this level. And, uh, and they're all still playing. And so because of that, mm -hmm. I think we're set up for a really good Elite Eight as we move forward into this week, fellas. I think because of all the teams that we expected um, to be there is going to be there. Not a lot of surprises. There are a couple teams that I think have played Cinderella. But, yeah, Mike, I, I think everything that's supposed to happen has mm -hmm. happened. Any, anything in particular you learned about any of the teams that you, that you saw or, or as you kind of look yeah. back at what happened? Anything that we've learned as a group here? Well, a couple things. One is, you know, a couple weeks ago I went down to McDonough and I watched the region tournament, um, Region 4, and, and had a chance to see Creekside, a team that I've really enjoyed watching over the years. Didn't think that was just a team that I'd be talking about today. Right. I mean, they're a right, sub-500 right. team, 12 and 15 on the season, but yeah, here they are playing in the Elite Eight, getting ready mm -hmm. to play Effingham County. and. Uh, so that they've surprised me a little bit. Uh, they've got a player, Ed Jones, who's a six foot six, six foot seven player that played really well in their region tournament. Now their benefit is to play Jakeen and Gant from Effingham right. County. Right. So this actually could be one of those types of games that I love in this time of year, where we get a guy like Ed Jones that we don't talk about, nobody really knows about. But here you get a big spotlight against a guy like Jakeen and Gant, arguably the top junior, one of the top two juniors in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, could this be a game where he kind of rises up, and could this be a game where we've got a sub 500 team moving forward? So I think that surprised me a little bit. And then guys, I think everybody on this table probably did this over the course of the weekend. You went to your laptop, you pulled up Google, you punched in New Manchester Basketball because we all want to know who the heck these guys are. Right. A second-year program, here they are in the Elite Eight. Right. And, um, and I think, you know, I made a lot of calls over the weekend going, who are these guys? The answer was all very simple. We don't know. Right. But, yeah, right. here they are playing for the Elite Eight. Right. Do you guys know anything about New Manchester? <laughs> Not at all. Actually, uh, as we were talking earlier, I actually thought the school down in Lower Manchester had just changed their name and said they were just new. You know, yeah, <laughs> so right. It's like, so, but you know, I'm I'm intrigued by what they're going to do, especially since they're going to be matched up against Gainesville. I mean, Gainesville is when I, when you look at them on paper, I mean, they struggled offensively, or as my guy Sam Allen likes to say, a defensive struggle, 41-40. <laughs> you know, but. The thing that is intriguing about that Gainesville group is that a lot of those guys have the state championship football experience on their side, and they're playing at home. So this is going to be interesting because you have a new program, you know, who is going up against a championship caliber minded program. So would would be interesting to be for a great matchup. And, and let me say this, listening audience, if you can help us out, tweet us at Hoopsie anything on New Manchester or any of these <laughs> matchups. Really get into the conversation. Hashtag. Um, March to Macon is what we're using. Love to hear what you have to say. Give us some feedback. Um, but let's talk about some of the other matchups, guys. What else, what else, as you kind of look at these next uh, set of games here in the Elite Eight, what should we be looking for? Well, I think the game that I think everybody, at least here in Atlanta, will be paying attention to is a matchup that we've already seen twice already this year. That's Tucker playing Miller Grove. They're region foes. James Hartree at Tucker and Charmin White at Miller Grove, two of probably the most story programs over the last six years here in the Atlanta area. Playing again for the third time. Mm -hmm. Miller Grove's beaten both times, guys, by an average of 15 points. Uh, I think Miller Grove takes care of business and pr pretty easily. It's going to be back at Miller Grove. They're playing on a rare Tuesday night game, doing a double hitter with the girls. Okay. So they're going to have a lot of emotion back in that gym. But uh, I think that game, at least from, a, from, a, from, from the old theory of can you beat the same team three times right. in a season, right. I think certainly comes into play. And if we know anything about Coach Hartree and his teams, they're going to compete. And they're going to be up for this. They're going to be right. ready for it. Because we saw that in the region tournament. With Miller Grove when they played Southwest to Cab, Southwest to Cab really gave uh, Miller Grove a good a good battle. I think Tucker uh, should, at least in theory, do that as well as right. we move into that game. Um, I know you guys had a chance to see Tucker over the course of the week, and how well do you think this is a team uh, coming into this game? Um, yeah, we we got the chance to see him in Alatoona earlier, um, and, and I think you hit most of the things right on. I mean, I, I think we would all agree that um, um, Miller Grove is the hands down favorite, but you know, I mean. Tucker does have some size on the mm -hmm. inside. They do have a, a, a guard um, that can score. And if you've got those two things, um, you've always got a shot to win. Yeah. Right? Well, the thing about that's going to be that's, that I want to see on Tuesday 
is because they are conference foes. Because you know, because it's it's one thing to play on a Tuesday night conference game, you know, against your conference foe, even on a Friday night. But this right here is for the final four. This is for a chance for Tucker to really make everybody in their region happy, as well as upset a lot of people yeah. who are hoping that Miller Grove is able to contend for history. Because well, that, that's who they're competing with. And that whole shock the world mentality, mm-hmm. I think you can really sell that going into there. And I, I sure. think that game will, at least in the first half, be really competitive. Right. And from there, I think Miller Grove, what we've seen from them all year is they shut, so they shut people down in the second half. Right. I think that's what we'll see. Then ultimately, guys, to me, I think the best overall game in, four, in, in, in Class 5A is Northside Columbus against Jenkins from Savannah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, Savannah, both of these teams are very similar. They both have about 12-game winning streak. Right. Jenkins is really balanced. They've got probably eight, nine, ten guys that go deep in their rotation. Right. Right. Then you look at Northside. We talked to our guy, Corey Black, down there a lot. He's been selling R.J. Sessions, a senior right. unsigned guard, right. uh, really selling him really high, a guy that scores about 18 points a game. And they've got one of the top freshmen in the state, Davion Thomas, right. who I think Coach Kenny Lawrence is doing a really good job of bringing him along. You know, Northside's had a program. They've got Jane Vincent. Who's at Georgia State? And then they've had Torn Walker, who went to uh, uh, Oklahoma State, who right. transferred as well. Right. But he's worked with big guys. Right. That intrigues me about a young guy like Davion Thomas. Can he can he kind of come through the ranks as well? I think that matchup is going to be really really good. And Columbus uh, Columbus guys know how to really kind of come out to a game. I think that game is going to be really contested. That to me is the game that when I look at these four matchups, that's probably going to be the best matchup of the four. And then again, going back to Effingham County real quickly, driving in today to do the show. I talked to a number of coaches asking about some of the guys in Effingham County. You know, we, we talk about JT Gant, but Ryan Wilkins and Jay Wright, right. Jay Wright, their point guard, Wilkins, their wing, mm-hmm. are guys that a lot of colleges are looking at. Right. I, I, you know, not to get too far ahead of myself and not to discredit the other teams, but man, the more I think about Effingham County and Miller Grove playing in the state championship, mm-hmm. is really intriguing. But of course, we've got to get through Tuesday and Wednesday night. Right, right. and, and I, I believe you're the original Final Four prediction. All the teams are still in play. So any changes or give us give us the I mean I'm not more time. I'm not messing with magic guys <laughs> I, I'm going to stay too and I still have Effingham County playing Gainesville and then I've got Jenkins playing Miller Grove uh, in the final four down in uh, at Kennesaw State with ultimately Miller Grove playing Effingham County so I still remain true to my picks okay I love that um, that my bracket doesn't have many X's on it if we were playing bracket challenge guys I'd probably win like a free pizza or something <laughs> well, I'd be right there with you. <laughs> Well, that wraps our 5A uh, show on the March to Macon, our Elite Eight show. Again, join us on Twitter, at HoopScene, uh, hashtag March to Macon. We'll look forward to talking to you there. And uh, good luck to the teams on their final March to Macon.